Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hi. So I thought that today, since I haven't been talking to you guys for a little while here, I've been on Instagram still, so if you follow me on Instagram you would have seen me. But anyways, um, I thought that I would sort of catch you up on some things that I've been loving since I haven't done like a products I'm loving video or things I'm loving video in a long, long time. It's been like a while. So let's get into it. Um, a lot of this is skincare. That's the first thing I want to preface this video with because if you guys know, I've been on the quest to find the perfect skincare routine and it has been a lot more difficult than I thought. Every time I get something into my routine, I integrate something new, something else falls off the bandwagon. It just doesn't work for me. And right now, the biggest thing that I've been working on is finding the best face cleanser. You would think this would be easy. I still haven't found anything that I love. I will say, currently I'm using the Pharmacy Clean B Ultra Gentle Facial Cleanser with Echinacea Green Envy Honey. It's one of the more natural brands at Sephora. I noticed them in the store because I thought, wow, the packaging on that is really nice. Um, but then I kind of read about the product and it sounded nice and I've been using this and I've been really liking it. However, I think my skin is too dry for this. And I think partly, partly, partially, partially, huh? Part of that is because, um, seasons are changing. All of a sudden it got really cold here. So I think that maybe is why my skin has been dry. At this point, I probably wouldn't repurchase this, although I do really like it. So I don't know what to tell you. It takes off my makeup really nice. It makes my skin feel really clean, but not like squeaky. Uh, I just feel like maybe this would be a better like summer cleanser for me when my skin is a little bit more like oily because I don't have oily skin naturally. But anyways, I've been talking about this for too long. I like it, but I don't love it. I just wanted to mention in this video because I do feel like it's a good cleanser. Okay, and it's what I'm using right now. Moving on, um, furthermore for skin, I guess we'll just kind of go in the order of I would apply things. So we have the face wash, the face cleanser, and then I have these two um, new kind of like serum-y things that I've been using on my skin from the brand The Ordinary. Their skincare is affordable and also good quality, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. I ended up getting two products, which in a sense sound conflicting, but I was assured by the woman working at The Ordinary because there's like an ordinary store in New York, which is where I got these. She assured me that these would be good together. Sorry, my dad just texted me. So the first one is the amino acids and B5. It's a concentrated hydration support formula. I do have dry skin and it's kind of weird because I think typically when people think of like people with acne prone skin, they think oily. No, my skin really is not oily. I really have dry skin. So I would say in the summertime, it was very much more like combination skin, but now I feel like I'm more on the dry, maybe some combination-ishness, but not really. Ishness is a new word, by the way. I just created it. So that's this one. Every time I film a video, I almost drop things and it just gives me so much anxiety. I just need to stop. Put it down gently. Okay, and then the other one is the niacinamide 10% and zinc 1%. And this one is for high strength vitamin and mineral blemish formula. So this one is for my acne or sebum production is what she said. So sebum is what causes your pores to clog and then you to create pimples. And I have found that this really, really does work. The brand is great. I mean, it's affordable and good quality. There's something in my eyeball. Okay, for moisturizer, I have been using... The First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream, which is good for sensitive skin, I have been using this on my face. I talked about this and I had a sample of it during the summer and I was like, I used it on my face and some of you guys were like, uh, don't use it on your face, it'll break you out. Y'all don't understand how dry my skin is. That's what I've learned because no, it doesn't break me out. Literally, my skin is so dry. And I do like this better than my Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Lotion. I used that for years and years and years. I almost want to say it was like close to a decade. Like I used it for so long, very rarely taking breaks. And then I used like this Acure brand, which is like an organic, like all natural one, but it was just like too greasy and too thick, even for me. So this is like the perfect balance. So I've been really liking this. Did you guys notice that I got a haircut? Yeah. It's really short and I really like it, you know, like the thing is with me and my hair is like, some days I hate it, some days I love it, but at the end of the day, I 
don't want to have long hair right now. It's just like not, no. Next, I want to talk about something that I obviously mentioned before. If you've been watching my channel, which is an Egyptian magic. I heard about this from people online and it basically they made it sound like it was going to solve like every problem I've ever had. That's not the case. So don't get your hopes up. However, it is a very good moisturizer. Personally, I would not apply this all over my face and that's partially because I guess I have combination skin. I don't know what my skin type is, honestly. I'm so confused. But I do really like this. Um, I've been applying this just to like dry patches on my face. And I do feel like you should have this, like just in case, even if you have oily skin, like just in case you have a dry spot, you can also use it like on your body and stuff. So there you go. So the last skincare product I want to talk about is also just like a catch up. And actually, I just repurchased this because during the Sephora sale that happened, um, I was like, well, even if I get a little discount, that's like something. This is the Sunday Riley UFO Ultra Clarifying Face Oil. This is my second bottle now. And this is the 35 milliliter or 1.18 fluid ounce. So it's like the bigger size. I've never had any face product change my skin to the extent that this has which makes me upset because it's so expensive, like it's annoying. So do I recommend this? Yes. Would I say you should go bankrupt for it? No. Would I say that you absolutely have to have this if you have acne? No, because honestly, what I've realized with acne is that everyone has something that works for them depending on their skin. Like everyone's skin is different, right? We've talked about this before. And the same thing with acne, like acne is so personal. People treat their acne differently and different things work for different people. This works for me and my skin and my acne, um, partially because it doesn't dry out my skin, which is already dry. So, I don't know. I just love the way this makes my skin look. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, damn, girl. You look good. And that's nice, right? Like, we all want to wake up feeling like that. That's the thing. So, like, this year for me has really been, like, skin focused. And so, I'm talking about a lot of skincare products because for me... This year, I spent a lot of time and research and money trying to figure out how to develop a skincare routine that really works for my skin, that can help my skin improve and look better. And honestly, like I see my skin getting there. Like I see it happening soon where my skin feels like the best it's ever been, and looks the best it's ever been and stuff like that. So um, I'm devoting money to this right now. You might not need to, I don't know. It's your journey. Okay, so two more products that are kind of like makeup-y. I guess these are just the only two makeup-y products I want to talk about. The first one is the Glossier Lash Slick, and this is a mascara. Now, I realized when I was in New York, which is a while ago now, but I realized when I was there, and then conveniently I was in the Glossier showroom, that the mascara that I brought I had had for two years, which is literally disgusting. So I tried this out in the store. That's kind of how Glossier works. Like everything is like testables. Tester, testers everything's a tester so you just like put it on and you're like hope I don't get a pink eye or anything which really was like really bothersome to me like it really troubled me like deeply to my core of my being I don't exactly know why well I do I don't want pink eye fair enough but I ended up buying it because I really did like it and crazy I don't really often wear mascara I'm not wearing it now I don't often wear it probably like less than once a week I would say maybe like once every month honestly. So I was kind of like, why am I spending my money on something I don't use that often? Well, this mascara is actually really great. So I just want a mascara that's going to coat my lashes, be quick and easy. And the biggest thing for me is not flake or smudge because every mascara flakes and smudges on me for the longest time. Like when I was in high school and I was wearing mascara every day, I would use waterproof mascara because every mascara I wore by the end of the day, I would have like a raccoon eye and it would be flaked everywhere. This one does not do that. I wore this in a hundred degree. Fahrenheit. We're popping around with the Celsius and the Fahrenheit here, but it was so hot in New York. This did not slide off my face. This did not slide off my lashes. And I just liked the way it looked. It was very natural looking, very light. It wasn't like a super wet or super dry formula. It was somewhere in between. And yeah, I just really liked it. Last, but certainly not least for like beauty stuff is the Kopari Lip Glossy. I've heard about this also. I've heard about this brand, specifically their coconut milk, which is something that I want to try, but it seems like overpriced for coconut oil. Like I need to wrap my head around it, but I've heard it's good. So we'll give it a try at some point. This is a lip balm or a lip glossy, I guess they say. I think of it as more of like a lip balm, but it is more glossy than like a... No, why? This is like coconutty wonderfulness and it 
smells so good and feels so good on the lips. I absolutely love wearing this. It's like my favorite summer lip balm ever and I'm wearing it into fall and I'm gonna just wear it all seasons. So really it's like my all year round favorite. Um, so I highly recommend it. It is very moisturizing and the only thing I will say negatively about this is that it doesn't last that long on the lips, but just keep applying it, who cares? The other thing I wanted to mention about the Glossier Lash Slick is the packaging so cute there's like a little G here just very like smooth and sleek and just like not complicated but like really cute that pink though can't get enough non beauty related random things that I've been loving first thing the book that I'm reading I have been reading the Harry Potter series again this is something that brings me a lot of joy talked about before on this channel but the Harry Potter series is very close to my heart I'm currently on the fifth book the order of the Phoenix and I've just been loving it it's honestly something that every time I pick up a book and I'm like reading my book, I'm like, huh, I just love it. The stories are so good. I bought the set on Amazon and I don't think it was that expensive. Although this one has like the weirdest Snape on the back. I put this on my Instagram story and I was like, what the F actual F? I don't know why it just creeps me out so much. Next is a new jewelry thing, which is in my ear. You guys know if you've been following my journey with my piercings that I had my conch pierced over a year ago now. And when I originally got it pierced, I wanted a hoop in it, but after doing some research and just like my general understanding of piercings from my piercing history, getting piercings initially done with hoops just like doesn't often heal that well. It develops more keloids. It's just like less comfortable. So I waited until my piercing was fully healed to change the jewelry. And even past that, like I feel like my conch has been healed for a while now. Like I would say it took like six months to heal, which is crazy because of how like big the hole is. It's actually like quite a large piercing. And I just ordered my like piercing jewelry off Etsy. And to like preface before I zoom you into my ear, I do not have my dream earrings in all my ear right now. I actually don't have earrings in my lobes right now. And eventually I would like everything to be gold, but for now it's silver and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. So I'll zoom you in. That's what it looks like. It's just a silver hoop and I absolutely love it. So I ordered it off Etsy. Yeah, so that's just what it looks like and I love it. I've had it in for probably, I think less than a week now, but I just love the way it looks. It looks like an ear cuff, but you know, it's not. And yeah, I find it really comfortable to sleep on and everything like that. But I would still like advise those of you who want to get your conch pierced to get it pierced with a stud. Just because, like I said, it heals better. Okay, last thing I want to talk about, and then we're going to end the video because this is very long. Too long, if you ask me. I have a new planner. If you guys follow me on my Instagram, a little while ago I posted about planners. And I was asking you guys which one I should get. I think I did a poll. And most people said this one and I totally agree with you guys like this is totally more my cup of tea it's like the tropical kind of one but honestly I wasn't super impressed with any of the planners this year by Bandeau which is the brand that I have been buying for the last three years I just like didn't love the prints or the like covers of any of them but I at the end of the day love the way they have like the inside set up so I decided that it would be worth purchasing um even if I'm not in love with this. This is the large size as well, which is something that I didn't really want necessarily. Although now that I have it, I'm like, why wouldn't I want the large? You know, go big or go home, that's what they say. So I don't mind it at all now, but I would say if you're someone who's like commuting with your planner or like taking your planner to and from various places, this is a little bit large. It's a little bit bulky. I totally admit that. However, for me, I love it. So guys, I think that's it for this video. Let me know down below anything that you're loving right now, any of your favorites, any of the things that I talked about, if you like them, if you love them, if you've used them. And yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.